we have just seen that if we have two bodies taking heat transfer in radiation body number 1 and body number 2 the resistance due to surface is given by 1 minus epsilon 1 upon a1 epsilon 1 then second one is that we have a space resistance is given by 1 upon a1 f12 and finally we have a surface resistance for body number 2 is given by 1 minus epsilon 2 upon a2 epsilon 2 the net heat transfer is given by net is given by q12 is equals to EB1 minus EB2 whole thing divided by plus epsilon 1 1 minus epsilon 1 upon A1 epsilon 1 plus 1 upon A1 F12 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 A2 1 up divided by A2 epsilon 2 EB1 and EB2 can be replaced by sigma into T1 to the power 4 and EB2 is replaced by sigma to sigma into T to the power 4 so what we get is Q12 equal to sigma into T1 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4 and denominator will be as it is. Now this equation can be used to solve any problem of whenever the heat transfer takes place between the two, two bodies. We can have one body is a small body as a body is a large body or we can have two parallel planes or we can have two cylinders or two spheres. If we consider a special case whenever a small body is in a large en enclosure like we have a very small body and is kept in atmosphere so atmosphere is going to be very large so area of A2 is equal to infinity but body number 1 is a finite is at temperature T1 epsilon 1 A1 now since A2 is very large this value will become equals to what infinity then that equal to 1 by infinity will be equals to 0 so only term left is 1 minus epsilon 1 upon epsilon 1 plus F12 the, as the radiation coming from bond number 1 is entirely falling on bond number 2 pressure factor is also equals to 1 so this is calculated as 1 up minus 1 upon epsilon 1 minus 1 plus as the bond number 1 is very small so what we get is 1 upon epsilon 1 from this equation second term is minus 1 the shear factor f12 is plus 1 and a2 is infinity so this value equals to 0 so here minus 1 and plus 1 is get cancelled and we have net radiation coming from board number 1 1 to 2 is epsilon 1 multiplied by sigma multiplied by a1 into t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 so in all calculations you should use this equation it is the most important equation and any case of problem can be solved with this let us take second case that we have a two parallel bodies in this case we have two planes plane number one at temperature t1 epsilon 1 and area a and plane number two is at temperature t2 epsilon 2 and a we will use the same equation and it is known that the shear factor f12 is equals to 1 so in this case a1 and a2 will be cancelled and this a1 is same as area so we get a numerator is same quantity a1 is same 1 minus epsilon 1 is same but only thing that a1 and a2 is cancelled so this is 1 minus epsilon 2 upon epsilon 2 now it can be divided as 1 minus epsilon 1 minus 1 plus f12 is 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus epsilon 2 so what we get is 1, 1 upon epsilon 1 that is the first term minus epsilon 1 upon epsilon 1 is minus 1 this shape factor is f12 is always 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 and minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 2 is minus 1 so minus 1 and plus 1 is cancelled so finally we left with a very simple equation for this is q12 equal to sigma into t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 multiplied by a1 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1 if you know epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and if you know the temperature of two bodies the two plane surfaces we can calculate heat transfer right q12 so let us consider the heat transfer with the same parallel planes but with the shield so we introduce here one highly polished surface that is the body number plane number 3 and this has the emissivity equals to epsilon 3 on both sides and let us assume that temperature equals to what T3 and the area equals to A so heat transfer from 1 to 3 will take place using the three resistances one is for surface one is for space and one more is for surface whereas for this one we have a surface resistance then we have a space resistance and then we have again a surface resistance so this surface resistance is 1 minus epsilon 1 that you can see from this 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 shear factor is from body number 1 2 3 so this equation is 1 upon f13 and the surface resistance for this body is 
1 minus epsilon 3 upon epsilon 3. If we reduce this equation, we will get q13 as sigma into t1 to the power 4 minus t3 to the power 4 multiplied by a1, 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 3 minus 1. So our reduce equation is q13 equal to sigma into t1 to the power 4 minus t3 to the power 4 into a1 upon 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 3 minus 1. Now, if we consider heat transfer from body number 3 to body number 2, we have Q32 equals to sigma into T3 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4 into say area A3, which is same as area A. And the surface resistance of this one is 1 upon epsilon 3. And this surface resistance is 1 upon epsilon 3, epsilon 2 minus 1. So we get Q32 equals to similar to this copy just this is first one is epsilon 3 1 upon epsilon 3 second one this one is your 1 upon epsilon 2 as it is and 1 is minus 1 but the temperature difference is between 3 and 2. Now for steady state heat can transfer Q12 must equals to Q13 and if we consider directly the heat transfer from body number 1 to 2 we encounter 6 resistance that is 1 2 3 here and 1 2 3 here that is 1 upon 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 3 minus 1 and uh, this series will be equals to 1 upon epsilon 3 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1. So we get Q12 equal to sigma into T1 minus T2 to the power of. So it transfers taking place from body number 1 to 2 so we have difference of T1 minus T2 to the power of 4. This area is same as A1 is equals to A. And the resistance between the first three will be given by this series 1 upon epsilon 1 upon up minus 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 3 minus 1. And the second series is given by 1 plus epsilon 1 upon epsilon 3 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1. For steady state we have Q13 A same as Q12. So if you equate equation number 1 that is Q13 and Q12, we can find out the temperature of the shield T3. And same quantity will also be equals to Q32. So heat transfer for steady state is given by any of this equation. So if you know the temperature T3, we can calculate the heat transfer from the given equation. Consider here a special case, in which case we have epsilon 1, epsilon 3, epsilon 2 or are identical. In that case, my first equation will become the Q13 equals to 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon minus 1. That is same as this quantity. Then from 3 to 2, I can again write down the same thing as T3 minus T2 to the power 4 and 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 1 minus 1 3. So if I consider from 1 to 2, I will get the difference between the T1 and T2 to the power 4 multiplied by area A1 is same as A is 2 upon epsilon 1 minus 1 plus 2 upon epsilon 1 minus 1. We are getting this term because of one shield. So in generalized, we can write this. So here we have get from the equation 1 in a special case is 2 upon epsilon 1 minus 1 and 2 epsilon upon minus 1. If we add this term, we will get 2 upon epsilon 1 minus 1 into n plus 1 where n is the number of shield. If we don't have any shield, then this value of n will be equals to 0 and we simply left with 2 epsilon minus 1. So we can compare the heat transfer with shield and without shield. Now this one is with shield. transfer with the shield is given by sigma into a1 t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 multiplied by a1 to epsilon 1 minus 1 n plus 1 whereas without without shield we have 2 epsilon minus 1 and value of n equals to what 0. So it's simply this factor. If we take a ratio we will get q12. So it indicates that 1 upon the ratio come out to be 1 upon n plus 1 if all the emissivity are equals to 1. If n equals to 1 then we have reduction of around 50 percent if n equals to 2 if we use 2 shield number of the surface resistance is equals to 2n plus 2 and the number of space resistance equals to n plus 1 if there are two surfaces and there is no shield then we have three resistances one for surface second for space and third for surface here n equals to z 0 so this number will be equals to number of resistance will be equals to 2 that is the surface and one number will be equals to space if we have one plate plate number 2 
and one is shield so shield is n equals to 1 so we have one surface we have one surface we have one surface and we have one surface that equals to n equals to 1 2 plus 2 is 4 surface resistance and we have one space resistance and we have one space resistance so n equals to 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 so total resistance are 6 so you have plate number 1 and plate number 2 and we have 3 shield 3, 4 and 5 so n equals to 3 this time so we have one surface resistance here one surface is here one surface one surface and this also has one surface so total number of surface resistance is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 so this number is n equals to 3 6 plus 2 is 8 and we have one space resistance here one space resistance here one space resistance here and one space resistance here so that number equals to 4 so 3 plus 1 is 4 so general idea is the number of surface resistance equals to 2n plus 2 and the number of space resistance equals to n plus 1 let's consider one sample question a solar radiation of 1200 megawatt per meter square falls perpendicularly on a gray surface opaque surface having emissivity equals to 0.5 if the surface temperature is 550 degrees celsius and the surface emissive power is 600 megawatts 600 watts per meter square you want to find out radius of the radiation falling is g equals to 1200 megawatts 1200 watts the emissive power of this one is 6 epsilon into eb is equal to 600 and we have given that emissivity of this surface is 0.5 so if emissivity is 0.5 we have reflectivity is equals to 1 minus epsilon that equals to 0.5 amount of radiation reflected equals to rho multiplied by g that equals to 0.5 multiplied by radiation equals to 1200 that is 1200 is equal to 600 so this total quantum rho into g plus epsilon into eb is called as radiosity so radiosity will be equal to 600 plus 600 that equal to 1200 watt per